Hi, I'm Gavin Glitzman. You're watching Sunboxing. Joining me today is Olympic medalist, Anthony Agogo. Anthony, congratulations. Thank first you, mate. Of all. Appreciate that. Now things have sort of, everything's settled in. How are you feeling? At first, I was very disappointed not to go on and win the gold medal because that's when I saw what I dreamed of as a kid. But now, as the kind of dust has settled a bit, I'm, I'm feeling more proud of my accomplishment um, as, as each day goes on um, and realise, you know, not many people get to go to Olympic Games. Um, the journey I've had was you know, quite traumatic but well, regarding different things and just getting there is a big achievement for me for all the things I had to deal with and you know, coming back with a medal and there's some fantastic boxes in our team and another team going home with nothing and you know, I, I do feel quite proud of my achievements. You've touched on it just there but obviously you had the injury problems and then mm -hmm. your mum being ill as well. First and foremost, how is she at the moment? Um, yeah, no, yeah, she's still in hospital but yeah, she's, she's getting there, she's doing really well so I'm really proud of her. Um, injury problems, now finally I'm over them all, you know, I feel really good, I feel this is the first time going to these Olympic Games is the first time I feel 100%, which obviously for any athlete, particularly a boxer, is, is very important, you build a lot of, you get a lot of your confidence from your fitness, and um, yeah, I'll just, I'm looking forward now to, you know, to, to kick it on and, and pushing on. Fighting in front of 10,000 people at the XL must have been an amazing experience. When you stepped out and when they were cheering every punch you threw, how did that feel? Do you know what? That was, a, that, that was, that was brilliant. When I walked out, um, I was the first British boxer on as well. When I walked out, I just kind of like the crescendo and the noise kind of like lifted me up. I felt like I kind of just floated down to the ring, threw a few punches, and just floated back without even my feet touching the floor. That was just amazing. That was the best experience ever. And, and each fight just got better and better. And, um, uh, yeah, you know, I'm so so thankful for the crowd because it makes such a difference. You know, when you like you said, when you've got those people cheering each each blow you land, and, and when it's getting tough and they're, and they're cheering you, come on, it's just that gets you over that finish line. In a way, though, knowing that so many people were watching along with everyone at home, did it not add to the pressure? Um, I think it did, but luckily, I think I'm, I've got the kind of personality that I think I thrived under the pressure. I'm, I know some of the some of the boys at boxing didn't perform as well as they you know, maybe would have liked. I think they kind of kind of crumbled under the pressure, um, but yeah, I, I, I fight under that pressure. I love it. You know, I love all the attention. I love like people shouting your name, the camera being on you. You know, I, 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 that's, that's me all over. So I just really enjoyed it. You no, know, I, I enjoyed it. And I think I fired in it, and you know, and um, I just I had a taste of it now, and I wanted to continue. All ten of you were heavily backed to win medals. Looking back now, are you proud of the achievements of the squad as a whole? Yeah, I think so. I don't, I don't think I. Um, you know, I wasn't any, anybody's bookie's favourite to win a medal. You know, I, I did it the hard way. I had the injury. I came back from an injury. I qualified at this, the final attempt, second and final attempt, and um, came back from a big points deficit as well and won the fight. So I did it the hard way. I didn't go in for ranking. You know, I boxed that first fight. Everybody else, apart from Josh Taylor, got a bye. Um, so yeah, I did it the hard way, and I think that that's why I'm proud. You know, like the medal. I know it's a bronze. It's not the gold medal, but it's a bronze medal. But it's. Um, it's, it means more than a medal to me, just for the, like, like I said to you earlier, you know, the, the, the experience I've had just getting to Olympic Games and going on and winning a medal, you know, that's, that makes me proud. I think the point scoring probably confused a lot of casual fight fans. Were you surprised by some of the decisions? Yeah, I was surprised how many countbacks there were. Um, but that's how much you're boxing for you. I've, you know, I think, it's, I think it's good now. I like the scoring. Some, we went through a stage about a year and a half ago where the score, you know, you'd win a, a one fight by 2 1. You know, I've won fights. You know, I've won fight. I won one fight as one all, and I won on a count back. So, it's back then the scoring was terrible. You know, it's really, really hard to you know, really hard to score a point, and that was just that was a bit of a joke to be honest with you. So they've kind of revamped it all now, and it's it's, it's good again. You know, it's exciting. There's the, the points are higher, um, and when you when you're watching, like you don't know what that's, that's great. Being one of the best things about boxing this tournament was nobody knows the score obviously during the rounds. So when somebody gets a lead, they can't just run away because they've still got to carry on fighting you know, to win. You've got to fight all, every minute of all, the whole fight. And then when the bell goes, you kind of quickly like turn to the crowd and wait, wait for, the, for, the, for, the, for the cheer or the boo. And then there's a fight after, but when I boxed the, the German for, for, the, for the medal, for my spot in the semi-final, at the first round I came out, threw my shots. But I, I know I got, I got hit a few times myself, so I wasn't too sure how the fight was going. And then the bell went, I kind of turned around like to nothing, you weren't you're not looking at anything, you waiting for the noise when the crowd like, waited a second or two, and then all started cheering, I thought, yes, I'm up, I'm going to kid. And then I was like three up, I think, so that's brilliant, yeah. Another big question, obviously, for you and the rest of the squad, I guess, turning professional, I'm sure you'll be inundated with offers. Are you ready, perhaps, to turn pro? Um, I haven't had any offers myself, I haven't heard anything about it. Um, I think, 
I think that whatever I want to do, I don't like. I haven't made it to the top. Obviously, I want that gold medal. I got a bronze. Um, whatever I do in the future, you know, I work so hard. I'm that dedicated. I'm that disciplined that I'll get to the top. Whether it's stay for another four years and go to Rio, I'm really, you know, if I do that, then I want to win the gold medal. And I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure I will, but I'll work with it absolute hardest to ensure that I do because I, I fell short this time. Or if it's if I do decide to take the pro route, you know, making sure I become a world champion, you know. Um, but at the minute, I've, I've been it's been boxing, boxing, boxing for so long. It's with the injury, with the recovery, like all the rehab and stuff, it's been it's been so manic for so long that my mind just needs to rest. Um, turning professional is a massive decision, and I want to make it. You know, if I decide to turn professional, I want to do it with a clear mind and know what I'm doing. And, and Rob McCracken, you know, our performance director, he's been fantastic in the whole last two and a half years I've, I've been with him. He's been brilliant. He's always said that he'll do, he'll, he knows boxing inside out, pro and amateur. So he said he'll always advise us and tell, basically tell us what to do, what's going to be best for us. So we've got a great team looking after us, not just me, but all the boys. Um, so yeah, I'm sure whatever decision that I decide to make, I'm sure it'll be the right one and the best one, and that'll have like Rob McCracken's blessing. And um, yeah, he knows boxing more than anybody. So I'm sure whatever, ha whatever I decide, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for the future. Do you think the squad would have had the success that it did without Rob? Short answer, not at all. Rob's just kind of brought such a level of professionalism. We've, because he's worked in the pro game, because he's boxed at the top level as an amateur and a pro. He knows what it's all about. He knows what you're feeling when you go to a tournament and don't perform. and. You need to make those, you know, corrections to, to do well next time. He knows what it feels like to, to lose and, and feel robbed or to lose and feel like, do you know what, he's better than me, I've got to be better. He knows exactly every fe every feeling that we have, he, he knows. And he's just, he, you know, he's created the best team. So the coaches we've got are brilliant. Um, nutritionists, physios, the sports science all behind the boxing is just, it's top notch. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it's, he's definitely, you know, definitely added to our like, medal tally. If you do go to Rio, obviously winning gold will top what you experienced in London, but there's going to be a party atmosphere in Brazil, there's no doubt about that, but will it be what you felt at the games on the home soil? That's it, that's, that's, that's a massive question because, I do not know, wearing, I'm wearing it now, it's, it's about a week after the Olympics, I'm still wearing my Team GB stuff because I'm just so proud, you know. Um, obviously representing Team GB at the Olympic Games has been something I've always dreamed about and it's massive for me and I, I always had to do it and I'm glad I have. Um, I'm so proud of I'm, I'm so proud and you, you, know, you can tell I'm, I'm getting all excited I can't even <laughs> talk properly um, so I'd love to do that again in four years time I'd absolutely love it because being part of something so special and so unique not many people can say they've done that but yeah, the flip side because London was so good and the support is brilliant the XL went nuts you know the opening ceremony the closing ceremony was so so good would that be would that be would Brazil beat London um, I'm not too sure it would so they're the things I need to weigh up when I'm on holiday. Um, they're the things I need to weigh up and assess and decide what I want to do. But whatever happens, you know, I love being an amateur boxer. I love it and I love representing each time I box, representing whether it's England or whether it's Team GB. You know, I've had, to, I've had, it's just been brilliant and I love it. And I would love it for to, to continue. So I really don't know what I'm going to do in the future. Um, all I know is that whatever I do do, you know, I'm going to be so determined to get to the top, whether it's a gold medal or a nice shiny belt around my waist. Having been around her for so long in the build-up to the games, how happy were you for Nicola Adams to walk away with that gold medal? It's great for the program to get our, you know, an Olympic champion on you know, on our books. Um, you know, just a testament to all the coaches as well, how hard they've worked and and how women's sport is now kind of going in the right direction in my eyes. You know, I'm, I'm my mum brought me up and I've got four sisters, so if I said anything bad, you know, they'd give me a clip right here when I got back. But in this, you know, they train hard, all the girls train hard, and it's a shame we didn't get three medals out of them. But yeah, it's great for the program, you know, because we've got an Olympic champion, we've got three Olympic champions, so that just breeds success. And if, if she's inspired more people to, you know, pick up the sport, then that's only going to do well for Britain. We saw you in your subway advert before the Olympics. You got any more of those lined up? I'm not too sure, to be honest with you. I'm not too sure. I, better, um, I, don't, I really don't know. I don't know. I hope so, because I quite like the attention of being on TV. <laughs> did you get free sandwiches, though? Yeah. Yeah, I did, yeah. It's, uh... And loads of people like, on my Twitter ask me, oh, do, you eat, do you even eat there? Do you even eat there? Like, Damn, why I eat there? It's good food, you know, it's good. And <laughs> I was going to do a quote then. I was going to say one of my lines, but I'm not going to do that. That's cheesy. But no, it's good. No, I, 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 I am. <laughs> I do get... Yeah, it's good. it's good. Just finally, you mentioned Twitter. I saw it earlier this morning that you, you're getting confused with a certain gymnast. Yeah, oh yeah. 
I was in the park recently, and I was walking. I'd, I'd, I'd had like two fights. I'd been, I'd been the world champion. I was just went for a little stroll around the Olympic Park, just kind of clear my head. And then some lady got grabbed me on the shoulder and said, "Oh, excuse me, excuse me." And I thought, "Yes, like someone's going to say, oh, I saw your fight yesterday. You did really well." So I kind of braced myself for it, and I was like, getting there, like, "Yeah, thank you, ready." <laughs> and she went, "You got a gymnast?" And was had the photo ready to take it. And I went, "Oh no, I'm not. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not." She went, "Ugh." Grunted in my face and stormed off, and I was like, I was left there thinking, sorry, I'm not, I'm not him. Uh, but yeah, Lewis Smith, he, he, he done really well at the Olympics as well. So you know, he's he's not a bad looking lad. You know, he's very successful at what he does as well. So it's not a bad person to be compared to. Um, but yeah, I'm Anthony Gogo in future reference. Okay, Anthony, cheers. Thank for you, that, cheers, mate. Nice to meet you. All the best for the future. Thank you.